Uh, we're going to just dive right in and talk about my beloved and Rudy's beloved, New York Yankees, and what the fuck is going on in the Bronx. I'm going to start off by saying I don't like what I see. Uh, the morale is low. It's really weird because the judge is playing really well, and you know he's typically been the fire starter for us in the past, but I think in a weird way his... His good play is really hurting us. Is, if that makes sense, it's weird. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Our pitching is lackluster. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of our manager. I know that's controversial to say, but I just I don't see us adjusting. And if this continues to happen, we're going to go into the postseason with no momentum. And the American League is really freaking good. I don't, I don't know if people pay attention to that because we had such a far – a far ahead lead in the beginning it was like, oh yeah, the Yankees are just gonna take it. It's like, no. Do you see the way the rest of the teams are playing? Do you see the way the Red Sox have handed us our ass the last couple of games? Like, have, have, do you see how horrible our defense has been? Our infield defense. It just just doesn't look good at all. And um, as a person that believes in the a Rod Rodriguez, Aaron Rodriguez, no, Alex Rodriguez, I'm sorry, Aaron Rodriguez. Uh, Alex Rodriguez curse of 2009. I truly believe in, and Nick likes to laugh at that. Since we cheated, the baseball gods are not going to give us one for 30 years. And that was 2009, it's 2024. I'm expecting another pennant in 2039. But um, some people get excited. I'm not one of those people. So, uh, Rudy, I'll let you get some things off your chest. I'm, I'm of the mindset this is going to happen. You, because we cheated. Uh, hold on, hold on. I don't like that. Yeah. You were definitely excited week one, bro. You were excited. You were, wouldn't even jump. I was excited for two months. On the podcast, y'all were excited. I was excited for two months, but I knew the baseball gods were going to arrive, Nick. I okay. knew they were going to arrive. We cheated in 09. They were going to arrive, Nick. Okay. And you know what A-Rod keeps doing? He keeps putting his name on UFC fits. The baseball gods don't like that. They don't like seeing his name on gyms, all right? They're going to they're gonna continue to do their job, and they're going to let us get excited. You know what I feel like right now? I feel like a Cowboys fan. <laughs> that's how I feel. I feel like a Cowboys fan, and that's a terrible mental state to be in, to be a Cowboys fan. So I'll let Rudy get some things off his chest, but that's just how I feel. I don't like the momentum. I don't like our energy. We don't seem like we're excited to play anymore. We were playing for fun in the beginning of the season. Now it just looks like, work and I it just doesn't look good. So the, the Yankees are seven and the Yankees just won thankfully. They they just won two to one tonight in Tampa, thank God. Because yesterday they lost five three. They have their pitching was fantastic in April and May. And Luis Hill was nine and one. He was humming. Carlos Rodon looked like the guy that we paid 168 million for. And um, Cortez was pitching well. Um, and then Clark Schmidt gets hurt, and he was pitching really well too. And he gets hurt just in time for when Garrett Cole comes back. And you know that Garrett Cole's not up to speed right now. I mean, he's pitching five innings. And the the fact is the the pitching has – Rodon has fallen apart. Mark, Marcus Stroman, he's pitched really well as well. Carlos Rodon has fallen apart, yeah. and that's a problem. Rodon has fallen apart. He's gone back to giving up home run balls like like people hand out Skittles to kids. It's just ridiculous watching him just serve up gopher balls. That we're out of the game. We're out of the game before the second inning because when when he's out there, because he's just giving up homer balls left and right. But it's the bullpen. Because even when the starters pitch well enough, the bullpen is giving this shit away. Clay Holmes gave away a game the other day. We're up three to one against Boston in the ninth, down to the last strike. And gives up a two-run homer. You go into extra innings. They give up a homer again. It's Tommy Canley gives up a homer. It's 5-3. Lose the game 5-3 and 10. 
I still hate that ghost runner thing. I think it's the fakest ex- example for baseball because it's not real baseball. But it, it, they have they're seven and seven and seventeen since they started forty nine and twenty one. They were cruising. They were playing great. And then all of a sudden, it just it's gone the other direction. And this is like a reminder of a couple of years ago when they were on fire, and then the second half of the season played like absolute dog shit. Aaron Judge is the best player in the world. He's hitting. I mean, he at one point he was he was leading in batting average again. He leads the league in homers. He leads the league in RBI. I mean, he leads the league in total bases. He leads the league in, I mean, he's second in walks behind Soto. He was leading the league in on base. Now he's second behind Soto. He leads the league in in, in slugging, OPS, second in war to Gunnar Henderson. Like, this guy is leading. He's, he's going to be the AL MVP. If he doesn't get hurt, he's the AL MVP again. He's playing better than he played two years ago when he hit 62. And yet... Their pitching is killing them. And this is where my problem lies with Aaron Boone. I'm not a Boone fan, and he does this every freaking year. He wears the bullpen out so damn fast to where they absolutely hit a wall by the middle of the season. They hit the wall. I mean, all of them. They're all struggling. It's not like there's one. It's like they're all. It doesn't matter who he puts out there now. All their arms have gone limp. They're all limp noodle arms now. It's just ridiculous. It, 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 you think they're going to have a series where now, okay, they're going to turn it around. The Cincinnati Reds, they get swept at home. I think it was at home, right? How do you get swept by the Cincinnati Reds on your home field? They're one of the worst. They're, they're awful. They're now in second place behind the, the Orioles. They're not. Obviously, there's a long, there's still a long way to go, but this is not inspiring. I think they found a good young player in Rice who's been who's filled in pretty well for uh, Anthony Rizzo, and I think Rizzo's done. Um, John Carlos Stanton, his injury sucked because he was actually playing well, well to the standard of which I would call well for him. He's still hitting 245, but if you think about it, last year he was hitting 170. Exactly. You know, him hitting 245 is a win. And he had like 17 homers. He's hitting the ball. But last year, he's hitting 170. Like when you have a guy hitting 170 to 245, I'll take 245 all day. Now, it has gotten – they better figure it out. They better figure out. I don't know what they can trade. I was hoping Jason Dominguez would be coming up, but he got hurt again. I did a setback. So he's not good. The Yankees have four nine-hole hitters in their lineup right now. Four. And Boone is doing that shit where he's messing with the lineups all over again. We were playing fine with Anthony Volpe leading off. Now Volpe's batting average has come back to earth a little. When he was hitting 275, 285, we were cruising. He's on base. He's a table setter. And Soto and Judge have guys to, to move over and put and drive in. Soto's been fantastic as well. He's been absolutely – he changed the way the team played early on this season. He was really a, a inspiring for these guys. DJ LeMay, who comes back, and Osvaldo Cabrera stops playing. I hate that. I don't know why. Gleyber Torres hitting 225, still loafing to first, still botching plays in the field. Have we not figured out by now that Gleyber Torres is not the answer? Yeah. At this – I mean, at what point do we do we cut – ties with Gleyber Torres. Every time I want to cut ties, he does something good, but then he goes back to doing some of, some of the dumb shit. So it's like, get, please, cut cut the cut the string with Gleyber Torres. I don't know where, when Oswald Peraz is supposed to be back. I know he's been on the, on, the, on the shelf. I don't know when he's due back, but when DJ LeMahieu came back, it's like they felt the need to jam his ass back. In, it's, like, it's like jamming that square peg into a round hole. And the second they did that, went like that. I don't need, I'm going to actually check right now real fast because I want to see when he actually came back because he's been fucking terrible. He's been horrendous, just like he was the last two seasons. So if we're sitting here talking about, you know, 
what, what when do, when we're sitting talking, talking about when you see a season change, he comes he came back on May twenty eighth. Since May twenty eighth, we are two, four, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh my word! I think it's fourteen and. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We are fourteen and nineteen since DJ LeMahieu came back. I don't want to call it a coincidence, but since DJ LeMahieu came back, our lineup's gone to shit. On the shit, and they keep trying to force that 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 square peg into a round hole. DJ LeMahieu was hitting as of yesterday, as of I'm sorry, Sunday, one ninety four. He bumped it up to 206. I don't know what he did tonight. I mean, we went 2 1, so I, I can't assume he did anything. But this is what we got. And they keep trying to force DJ LeMahieu in there because he's being paid $20 million. Yeah. If he wasn't being paid $20 million, we're not even have, he's not even in consideration to be on the field because they were cruising until he came back. I mean, 2 0, he's hitting 202 with zero homers and 11 RBI. This is a major league baseball player? We're playing Trent Grisham in center field right now, and Judge is basically playing DH, which I don't like. I prefer having Judge in the field. I like Judge in the field. I think he hits better when he's playing in the field as well because he's he was on fire, and he got a little slow the last week or so. I mean, it's going to happen and all, but Trent Grisham can't really hit. I mean, albeit today he had one of our RBI. For the most part, he can't hit. You know, so you look, Verdugo, they had Verdugo leading off today. And what does Verdugo do to start the game off? Swings at the first pitch, pop up to the catcher. Leadoff hitters do not swing at the first pitch. Like, that's literally your job is to table set. That's why I don't get the Volpe switch. Volpe was playing very well. Keep him in the leadoff position. Now he's hitting fifth, sixth, seventh. What? I mean, God almighty. They had this kid, Rice was leading off. He had three homers versus the Red Sox in that game, in that, in that series. And then the next game, we don't score a run. They need to figure it out quickly the pitching they're they better be doing making some moves for this bullpen because Boone has worn this bullpen into the ground. Luis Gill, Luis Hill, he pitched really, really well his last game. That was against the Red Sox. Gave the one homer to Rafael Devers. He left the game in a one nothing game on Sunday. He did all he could do. But we need to we need Rodon to figure out what the fuck is going on with him. He needs to go to a therapist or something because he was nine and two and now he's nine and seven and getting hammered. So yeah, very disappointing, very concerning, and I and I don't like overreacting, and I didn't for the first week or so, but now we're talking about a month. <laughs> no, for the Yankees, I don't. It's long, baseball's a long ass season. I don't overreact in baseball. In baseball, I don't overreact because it's a long season. Aaron Judge, Don, I'm in Facebook groups. Yankees fans, I had to leave the Facebook group because these imbeciles were talking about we need to trade Aaron Judge, cut Aaron Judge because he was hitting 170 in April. It's like. Are you stupid? That's but this I'm is the type of thing that exists with Yankees fans. Yeah. Cut Aaron Judge. And, fa- and it wasn't just the sum. It was a lot of people. The worst contract ever. You know what? He's having a better season right now than he had two years ago when he earned that contract. I don't want to hear that shit. But they were ready to trade him. And he, and since then, he's hitting 390. In May and June, he hit 390. Like, what are we talking about with a 730 slug and some shit like that? I mean, he had he had ridiculous numbers. And then, so with baseball, I don't overreact because it's a it's a much longer season. But when you talk about a month where you're playing like complete and utter horseshit as a team, it's concerning. And it always always go it always ends up back with Aaron Boone and his absolute. It's it's shocking <laughs> to get an entire segment where Nick doesn't say anything. I kind of enjoyed it. Kind of enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie. Um, us winners over here with 27 chips, we get a chance to you know go back and forth and talk our shit. But um, as we uh, segue off our beloved New York Yankees, mm-hmm. 